Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Grist Pod. I'm Matt Velez. Today, we'll be talking to junior softball player at first base, shot put, discus thrower, and my favorite walk-up song on the team, Anastasia Watson. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So some notable stats about Anastasia Watson. She is the outdoor record for shot put at 11.16 meters and discus throw at 40.63 meters. Both records broken last year and a new record leader this year under her belt as she broke her previous outdoor shot put with an indoor PR of 11.52 meters at the Scarlet Knight Open in February. She told me to be Pacific. And so Stassi, tell us a little bit about yourself. So hi, I'm Stassi. I'm a junior here at Chestnut Hill. I major in chemistry with a minor in biology, and I'm grateful to be here today. Yeah, I'm grateful to have you on. And um, so you said you, I said you play softball and track and field, and uh, I wanted to ask you, how did, how did you get into those sports? Right, so I got into softball way before I got into track. So I got into softball around when I was eight or nine years old. That's when I definitely started playing. I did not start at first base. I started as a catcher, actually, so fun fact. And I've sort of been playing ever since, taking little breaks here and there. I did get recruited here to play, compete in track and field, so which was way different than I thought my life path was going to go. Um, I got into track my junior year of high school, halfway through my junior year. So very, very big turnaround from what I thought I was going to be doing at this point in my life. But So how, how different was it? I have to ask you, how different was it playing uh, catcher and then going to first base? It wasn't a straight shoot. So I started at catcher and then I went – to right field and then I didn't play the field at all I just sort of hit and then I found myself at third base and then automatically sort of just migrated to first when more people were playing third so I just kind of fit there so you were like all around the diamond throughout the last few years and everything yeah definitely the only probably positions I haven't really played matter of fact in a game is probably short um second and pitcher You've been in the outfield, right? You've been yes. Okay, I've been in the outfield. I remember because being in the games and commentary, I think I've seen you in the outfield a couple of times, maybe. Maybe I'm not sure. Probably my freshman year, if I did play there. Pro- probably. Yeah. I'll have to look back in all the tapes. <laughs> I don't know. But um, to ask you the next question, I know you play both sports, and how much of a mental aspect goes into the sport, and is it more mentally challenging for field or for softball? Definitely more mentally challenging for softball. I would say it's more time demanding. With track, I can sort of just go out and have my alone time, sort of throw, practice, whatever, sort of by myself. Um, So that gives me sort of mental clarity more. With softball, it's a team sport, so you have to constantly be talking to other people, constantly be sort of engaged in what you're doing. Um, And it's more mentally not draining, it's more just mentally taxing, definitely having to work on staying involved the whole time. Um, whereas physically, I would say it's a little bit more demanding. I'm definitely feeling the effects of being in season for two sports at the moment. So definitely a little bit of a struggle. Yeah, that's right. And I, I, on top of that, you know, being a student, it definitely takes a mental toll. And um, have you have you played any other sports besides softball and the field? So when I was younger, around middle school, I did do basketball and volleyball. Yes, I know everyone was waiting to hear if I played basketball in my (laughs) life. (laughs) I get that question probably three times a week from strangers. But um, yeah, so basketball and volleyball and nothing else, though. I didn't swim or do anything like that, Um, but they didn't stick. I didn't really like them that much, and I wasn't very good at them. So I I understand. I mean, we we all can't be... Can't be good at everything. And when you said that, if everyone asked you if you played uh, basketball, I, I always got asked, do you play soccer? I'm like, no. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 get, I, I got asked at, a, at the – I was waiting for the L. So I'm like, do you play soccer? Yeah. I was like, I don't even know you. But no, I, I don't I don't play soccer if you were asking me. It's probably because you know, I'm Hispanic. I, I, I don't know. Maybe one of those things. I was I just about to say that's a little bit out there. But, I mean, we're going to take it back home real quick. So <laughs> how is the CHC experience for you as a student athlete or, or just a generality of it all? CHE has always sort of felt a little bit like home for me Um, as soon as I sort of got here. Everyone is so welcoming and so kind and coming from, you know, a household with a mom who is very kind. That's how I grew up. And I haven't really faced any sort of negative experiences here um, as far as like people being rude or whatever it may be. So I've 
I've enjoyed my experience. I have great relationships with all my teachers. I think that's mostly why I'm still here is because I've spent the time building relationships and connections and it's worked out. Yeah, I think I think especially you hit the hit it on the nail when you said uh, staff and the teachers, because like I said to you earlier before we started, I've been all the staff I'm close with. Like they're all like family. And I went yeah. to um, the Women's Wellness Day yesterday downstairs and I was saying everyone's like, hey, like saying hi to me because I know them and just to build relationships with them. It's so special because they, like you said, they're all so welcoming and I feel like they're they're all family. Like those are people I will remember when I graduate and for the rest of my life. So I think you hit it on the nail. Uh, about that and would you say that's your favorite part of chc or is there something else that separates it that is definitely my favorite part of chc is the relationships that you find here through friends and authority peers everything i feel like that's what really set my academic experience apart from other friends that i have at different universities is because it is a small school a small campus you sort of know everyone down to the security guards and the janitors and things like that, the people on staff. So definitely sets my experience apart. And I'm really glad I stayed here and committed here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also glad that we, are, we were all able to, to commit to this school. And I have to agree with you, like I said, the, uh, the staff and, and no, no bad experiences here mm -hmm. on campus. And it would have to commit yourself to this program and, and be a part of it and have the notable stats that you have. And we're all glad that you're, that you're here uh, with us. <laughs> And I would say like going into these sports, you know, have you faced any adversity to get where you are today? It's funny that you asked that because I just had a conversation with my mom about this the other day. Um, I have some friends who have definitely faced some, I would say like racial discrimination, softball and even baseball are more catered to a certain skin color. So growing up, I always was the only sort of person of difference um, on my teams um, and I no one was directly any sort of way towards me but my mom definitely got some of that grief she was telling me how she went through other parents being icky towards her because she is white and I'm not so she sort of faced some adversity like on the sidelines um, but I didn't hear anything or anything like that I can say people always expect so much of me because of my height. I think people associate height with success and athleticism to a different level than people who are short, at least in my experience, um, unless you're, of course, short and very muscular visibly, but people sort of expect the most out of you, thinking that you're most athletic, thinking that you can just pick up a basketball, like I said, and do something with it that's greater than everyone else. I don't know, but definitely a little bit ad of adversity, but not directly towards me, just my family. Right. I know what you mean. It's, uh, it's that it's an unfortunate reality where people just have expectations just by your appearance. Yeah. And that should never be the case anywhere mm -hmm. in life. And um, to see you have come this far so far and we're only what <clears throat> 21 20 years old yeah so we, we have uh, a long way to go to, to prove people wrong show them what's what and everything but i want to switch it up a little bit i know that you played a bunch of sports but um what do you what do you like most about playing the sport and if it's whether it's softball or field or one or the other with track the um, the reason why i kept doing it after i tried it for the first time is the competition aspect of it being so broken up when you throw it's like you throw and then you take a break and then you throw again and then you take another break so it was very laid back which I really liked there was no constant sort of pressure um because I'm someone who really doesn't like that much pressure I like to feel at ease I like to feel at home sort of in my equilibrium so definitely track was felt like home um, and when you're throwing, it feels so exhilarating. Definitely as a rotator, um, it feels like you're flying through the circle kind of, um, which is a great experience. Even if you don't know how to do it, it feels like you're floating. So that's definitely something I, I love when season comes back around and I'm able to do it in front of crowds and I'm able to sort of embrace who I am. Track feels who I am. So that's why I stick with it. With softball, I like feeding off of everyone else's energy. The energy of having a team sport and sort of building off of everyone else's success mid-game is 
definitely one of the the best feelings you can feel on the softball field. And I'm really glad that we've sort of as a team have come close closer to that, like building off of each other's success and being able to sort of string hits together and feel the energy that you're supposed to feel on the softball field. It's been an amazing experience to to feel that as the season progresses. So. Yeah, and I, I've noticed um, commentating you ladies, I've noticed the energy in the dugout is strong. And so compared to last year, it's a lot stronger. And I see the energy that you feed off of each other, whether it's off a walk or a hit. And if it's just something that simple or that basic, it will feed the dugout so much. Like every opponent that steps onto the in the other dugout, you girls are always the loudest. No matter who, who's on there, no matter what it's about. And I, I love seeing that and being a part of that CHC program. Like I love seeing that from the team, whether it's whether it's up 10, down 10. You girls are there all the time. And yeah. for that, I, I love to see that. And um, I, I'm kind of intrigued to know why you don't, uh, you don't like pressure. I'm curious to know. I don't like pressure mostly because I don't like the feeling that you get in your stomach when you feel pressure. I know a lot of people are able to embrace it. And I've faced a lot of performance anxiety the past couple of years. So it's something that sort of throws me off a little bit. Um, I'm definitely working on it and definitely learning to embrace it more but i like to be comfortable and i like to do things that i'm very good at so if i'm struggling that's when i feel the pressure and that's when you know things start to get a little out of whack with how my body's feeling but other than that it's just the feeling i don't like the feeling it's uncomfortable but in life you're gonna have to learn how to be uncomfortable and that's something i'm definitely learning yeah you know what they say pressure makes diamonds and uh, pressure is privilege <laughs> so I, I, that's 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 what i try to try to live by everyone feels pressure uh, in their life. And on top of that, I have to ask you another question. What skills would you like to improve throughout the season in both field and in softball? With track, um, this season, I've definitely been working on my release um, within my technique. A lot of my throws this season have been sort of flat, have been coming out low. You want a 45 degree angle of your disc when it comes out of your hand. And I've sort of been struggling with that a little bit. Um, but something I would like to improve on overall, I think, with being a dual sport athlete is definitely the balance, making sure I'm getting out there every single day, even though my body may not feel the best or I may not feel up to it. Definitely getting to that point of the grind and making sure I keep up with it, especially as the next few weeks sort of are winding down. Um, with softball, I definitely want to improve just staying out of my head a little bit. Um, like I said, I get performance anxiety and it's been a little bit heightened recently. That's something I've been definitely keeping an eye on and actively working on the mental aspect of everything. Um, because it has been an obstacle for me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I respect that to be able to, to get into the nitty gritty and to be able to perform at that level and to, to know what you have to improve on, to recognize what you have to do to get better and to able to take that first and I think it's the first step. Believing is the first step when you're halfway there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so I know we talked about uh, the field aspect and now the softball aspect. And I want to ask you, what is your relationship with your teammates? I love my teammates. Uh, I'll always say that. Um, with track, even though it's so, I would say distant with being individual athletes, even though we're on a team, like you sort of compete for yourself a little bit. So even though we're all in sort of different events, we all cheer each other on and there's sort of like a goofy aspect and it definitely feels like a family. With softball, I mean, I love those girls so much and I'm so glad to be on the team and to have the opportunity to sort of play both and have two different groups of people sort of cheering me on and being there for me and just being able to openly speak to them about things that I have going on and then vice versa and it's it's awesome to have sort of your teammates become your friends and be able to spend these times together not just as surface level teammates but as deeper friends yeah i think it's i think it's special to to know that because you've seen it both ways in a track and field and then in softball and to bring those two together and they kind of separate themselves you know like i agree with you personally being on the a track team myself it is like you're running for yourself or you're competing for yourself. But in softball, it's a non, it's a non-woman lineup and you're all there together. 
like if someone gets a single into right and first in the lineup, then you've got to rebound off of those hits and people, and you're going to have that team to support you. Mm -hmm. uh, I could have said any better myself. And my final question, I wanted to ask you this because I put it in last minute. So what is your warm up song? A song that gets you going when you're about to compete or after you compete or in the gym or wherever you may find yourself. So even though you said my walk up song is your favorite, I'm not it a is. music gal. <laughs> I would say really? I like, I like science. I like, you know, nature so i'm very much sit outside and listen to the outside sounds before games i know that's a very anticlimactic sort of answer but if i am listening to music it's worship music i love worshiping and feeling exhilarated by the word of god and being able to feel that feeling before i go compete it's amazing so if you see me before games and I have my beats on or before meets and my beats are on, it's mostly just either silence. They might not even be connected to my phone or it's definitely worship music. That's what I flip flop between. I like the serenity before I compete, the calmness before the storm, as people would say. I love that. That, that was a good answer. I know <laughs> it might have seemed anticlimactic, but that's it's different. You know, I, I would have never expected that. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and say I would I would have guessed that. No, I, I wouldn't. But I like that. It's it's different and it, it, it separates you from other people. Like, I, I thought you were gonna say like, you know, Drake, J. Cole. Like, <laughs> like so that's something I would have said. Like, Bad Bunny. Yeah, I get hyped up. But no, you like the idea of nature, and I feel like people don't take enough time to appreciate nature. Yeah. And then you said worship as well. You know, of course, Catholic school and everything. Um, I want to ask you. It's not even on here. Do you do you know who Joel Osteen is? Joel Osteen? I do not. No, he's he's a um, he's a religious speaker, oh, okay. and he has a um, a center in Houston, Texas, and he has a podcast every single day. So if you want to something to listen something to listen to while you admire nature, I listen to him every day. Wow, I might need to add podcasts to my pre meet ritual then. After after the show, I'll, I'll, I'll show I'll show you a few episodes. Okay, awesome. All right, but. That about wraps it up. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been another week of the Grist Pod. And it's Susan Watson. Thank you so much for being on the show today. You can follow us on Instagram, guys. Other than that, have a good rest of your day. Thank you.